team mds conquer in this video i'll be talking about orbit and mid phase trauma coming to the first point which is very important the most common type of orbital fracture is blow out type of fracture and the most common wall involved in the orbit fracture is the floor of the orbit and the thinnest wall of the orbit is the medial wall and its thickness is around 0.2 to 0.4 mm and the shortest wall of the orbit is the floor and the characteristic sign of orbital fracture is post traumatic diplopia all these five points are very important every point can come as an mcq so most common type of orbit fracture is blow out most common wall involved in the fracture is floor and the thinnest wall is the medial wall and its thickness is 0.2 to 0.4 mm and the shortest wall of the orbit is floor and the characteristic sign of the orbital fracture is post traumatic diplopia so this picture is showing blow out type of fracture how does this blow out type of fracture occur when a larger object larger than the size of the orbit hits the orbit it causes blow out type of fracture see here the floor is gone and the orbital content is herniating down into the maxillary sinus so two theories which are associated with blow out type of fracture is retropulsion theory and buckling theory retropulsion theory is also known as hydraulic theory so you need to remember this the theory is associated with the blow out type of fracture this picture is showing it is an mr sorry it is an ct scan coronal section showing hanging drop sign which is a characteristic feature of the blow out fracture of the orbit see there is an communication between the orbit and the maxillary sinus the orbital contents are herniating down and the radio lucency of the maxillary sinus is lost so there are other names for blow out type of fracture it is also called as white eye or trap door type of fracture so this point is very important that is the other names for blow out type of fracture it is white eye or trap door type of fracture what is this test this can come as an image based question this is force duction test to check for the entrapment of the muscle what is done here here the tendon of inferior rectus is grasped and the eyeball is moved in all direction to check for the entrapment so most common muscle that is entrapped in full floor fracture that is blow out type of fracture is inferior rectus which can cause diplopia that is post traumatic diplopia the classical triad of blow out type of fracture is diplopia intraorbital numbness due to injury to the intraorbital nerve and periocular ecchymosis so you have to by heart this that is classical triad of blow out type of fracture is diplopia intraorbital numbness and periocular ecchymosis what is diplopia diplopia is double vision so there are two types of diplopia monocular and binocular in case of monocular diplopia diplopia is seen when one eye is covered so what happens in this case when both eyes are open the diplopia doesn't seen when one eye is covered the diplopia is seen in case of binocular diplopia diplopia disappears when one eye is covered so with both the eyes the patient can see normally but when when one eye is closed diplopia is seen in case of binocular diplopia what is this ocd it is an outer canthal distance normal is 100 mm interpupillary distance normal is 60 mm and intercanthal distance normal is 30 mm okay now we'll see the telecanthus and hypertelorism difference between telecanthus and hypertelorism in case of telecanthus there is an increased intercanthal distance so the intercanthal distance is increased and there will be smaller palpebral fissure length 
in case of orbital hypertelorism there will be increased intercanthal distance increased outer canthal distance increased interpupillary distance but there will be normal palpebral fissure length so traumatic telecanthus is caused due to ligament splaying and the orbital hypertelorism is due to the walls splaying apart that is the median walls of orbits playing apart causes hypertelorism and the ligaments that is medial canthal ligaments on both sides playing apart causes telecanthus what are the indication for surgical treatment of orbital fracture when the anophthalmus is greater than 3 mm when, the, when there is an herniation of tissue into the antrum when there is an tissue entrapment or limited mobility if the diplopia is not resolving after 2 weeks of observation and the orbital fractures involving more than half of the floor and when there is an increase in the orbital volume so all these are indication for surgical intervention of the orbital fracture all these points you need to remember approaches to intraorbital region various incisions like intraorbital incision subciliary incision subtarsal incision transconjunctival or through pre existing laceration so in this picture the c is showing intraorbital incision and the b is showing the subtarsal incision and a is subciliary incision and here d is an extension of subciliary incision transconjunctival incision here in this picture it is showing transconjunctival incision that is placed in the palpable conjunctiva for aesthetic purpose so this can come as an image based question the subciliary and transconjunctival are commonly used because of their superior aesthetic result so this is an important point so which incision are most commonly used for superior aesthetic result that is subciliary and transconjunctival what are the materials that are used for reconstruction of orbital floor the autogenous materials like calvarium iliac crest rib graft zygomatic buttress and mandibular symphysis so they can ask which autogenous material is used for reconstruction of orbital floor so they can be calvarium iliac crest rib grafts zygomatic buttress mandibular symphysis what are the alloplastic materials that are used for reconstruction of floor of the orbit like teflon silicon methyl methacrylate metal alloys titanium vitalium and metpore so among autogenous alloplastic material autogenous bone grafting is the first line of choice so these can be picture based question this is in metpore showing porous polyethylene implant which helps in the reconstruction of the floor of the orbit this is an preformed titanium mesh available in the market which can be used for reconstruction of floor of the orbit so this is an custom made titanium mesh which can be customized according to the patient's anatomy two buttresses of facial skeleton they are vertical buttress transverse buttress and sagittal buttress what does this buttress represent buttress represents the pillars of the face here the red arrows are showing vertical buttresses that is naso maxillary buttress zygomatico maxillary buttress and pterygo maxillary buttress and the blue arrows are showing transverse buttress that is horizontal buttress that is superior orbital rim second is inferior orbital rim the third is alveolar process of the maxilla and the fourth is alveolar process of the mandible and fifth is lower border of the mandible and the green arrows are showing the sagittal buttresses of the 
facial skeleton that is the allular process of the posterior maxilla in the zygomatic arch what is the importance of buttress they provide adequate bone stock for reduction they are the stable bone for anchorage so whatever we are doing that is during management during plating the plates are placed in this buttress region because they have thick bone in case of mid fract mid phase fracture the primary fracture treatment is limited to 2 weeks after 2 weeks the treatment is regarded as delayed so these two points are very important so primary treatment of the mid phase fracture is limited to 2 weeks that is it should be done before 2 weeks if the fracture comes after 2 weeks the treatment is considered as delayed what are the goals in the management of mid phase fracture to restore the anatomy in all the three direction so you need to remember this goals they can ask you as an mcq the goals in the management of mid phase fracture to restore the anatomy in all the three dimensions that is the horizontal dimension vertical dimension and the anterior posterior dimension and plating of all the maxillary buttress if possible and restore the vertical dimension and horizontal projection and restoration of premorbid occlusion so there are four goals that you need to remember restoring the three dimensions of a face and plating of all the maxillary buttresses if possible and restoration of the premorbid occlusion so classification of leaf fold which was modified by marciani is very important which was given in the year 1993 this year also you need to remember so they can ask you the type of fracture they can ask you what is type 1 what is type 2 what is type 3 type 3a or 3b they can ask you in an mcq what is type 1 type 1 is low maxillary fracture when low maxillary fracture is into multiple segments it is 1a type 2 is pyramidal fracture 2a is pyramidal fracture plus nasal fracture and type 2b is pyramidal fracture and noe fracture and the type 3 is craniofacial disjunction type 3a is craniofacial disjunction plus nasal fracture type 3b is craniofacial disjunction and naso orbito ethmoidal fracture and type 4 is pyramidal fracture or cranio facial disjunction with a skull base fracture in 4a supra orbital rim is involved in 4b is supra orbital rim plus anterior cranial fossa is involved in 4c the superior orbital rim anterior cranial fossa as well as the orbital walls are involved so all these types you need to by heart the classical leaf fold lines the first line the leaf fold line is low maxillary line and the leaf fold two line is a pyramidal shape line and the leaf fold three line is craniofacial disjunction extending from fz to fz fz is fronto zygomatic suture what is this identify it is in palatal acchymosis which is a classical feature of leaf fold one fracture it is also called as guerin sign what are the characteristic feature of leaf fold two fracture moon phase or ballooning bilateral circum orbital edema or acchymosis that is black eye and dish phase the characteristic of leaf fold 3 fracture includes panda faces and raccoon's eye in circumorbital or periorbital acchymosis bilaterally in hooding of the eyes so all these characteristic features of leaf fold 2 and leaf fold 3 fractures you guys need to remember what is this incision this is a mid phase degloving incision 
it provides access to the nasal dorsum ethmoidal area nasal dorsum ethmoidal area zygomatic body and lower orbital rim as well this is an intraoral incision intraoral vestibular incision called as mid face degloving incision so any fracture in this area can be approached intraorally through this mid face degloving incision what is this incision this is a maxillary vestibular incision in case of mid face fracture when there is a leaf foot one fracture and buttress need to be assessed this incision is used that is maxillary vestibular incision what is this incision this is an glabellar incision this incision is given when you need to see medial orbit nasofrontal suture and nasal bridge so in case of leaf foot 2 fracture this incision can be placed leaf foot 3 fracture to suture the nasofrontal area or the nasal bridge this question can come as an diagram based question identify in this picture the a shows lateral eyebrow approach that is lateral eyebrow incision for approaching the frontozygomatic suture and the b that is upper eyelid approach also called as upper blepharoplasty incision this incision can also be used to assess the frontozygomatic suture as well as the supraorbital rim management of leaf foot fracture through mini plates plating at the buttress region in case of this is a picture showing management of the leaf foot one fracture can you see the leaf foot one line low maxillary fracture or hanging maxilla two plates are placed at the buttress region in case of leaf foot two three plates are placed that one is one is at the nasofrontal suture and one is at the intraorbital rim and the other is at the zygomatico maxillary buttress in case of leaf foot three fracture three plates are placed first plate at the nasofrontal suture and one plate at the fz suture and one plate at the zygomatic arch what are these pictures showing these pictures are showing suspension wiring of the mandible this is most commonly employed in cases of leaf foot fracture to sandwich the maxilla between the mandible and the skull so there are various types of suspension wirings like frontal circumzygomatic zygomatic intraorbital suspension wiring piriform aperture suspension wiring so this is in zygomatic arch suspension wire sorry this is an intraorbital rim suspension wiring this is a zygomatic arch suspension wiring because the wire is hanging from the zygomatic arch and this is an piriform aperture suspension wiring this is a frontal suspension wiring thank you guys this is all for the orbit and the mid face fracture thank you all for your love we'll be soon coming up with more informative stuff till then keep working hard keep motivating yourself because trust me guys no one is going to do it for you unless and until you do it for yourself see you soon signing off dr love